Welcome back to Alligators. Today we're going to shred Julia Fox. Buckle the fuck up, because man, homegirl is a disaster. We're also, also we're going to shred Kanye West, but like really that's nothing new. Are these two truly in love? Like is this like a match made in demented heaven? Or is she cruising for a bruising emotionally and I don't know, man, maybe physically. We're going to talk about what's going on with these two and how Julia says she's surrendering to yay world and what we can do to avoid getting lost in a relationship. And if you're already in one and you're like, I am lost right now, I'm going to give you some easy, concrete ways to get out of it and get back to yourself. But before we get started, just want to remind you guys, we've got a Shalligator getaway coming up to Costa Rica. We're going to Costa Rica May 29th to June 4th with Trova Trip. It's going to be so much fun. I'm bringing along a photographer, a yoga instructor. We're going to be hiking volcanoes, like not too rigorously, hanging out on the beach, cocktail classes, photo shoots. Da, da, da. It's going to be so much fun. So go ahead. I think there are four spots left. Go ahead and click the link in the bio. And speaking of links in the bio, we are still doing our philanthropy. I always get tripped up on this word, even though I made it up. Our fundraisers. We support teachers who need stuff for their classrooms through an organization called Donors Choose. It's a great organization where teachers can come up with their own little fundraisers for the dollar amounts that they need. And I really focus on stuff that involves food and warmth. So coats, jackets, snacks for little ones. And right now we're trying to raise a few hundred dollars for a teacher down south. So if you can donate even one dollar, five dollars, is that cowboy howling? He's done hearing about this. Okay, we'll move on. <laughs> Quick reminder that if you want to talk to me one-on-one, -on -one, head to my website, shallonlester.com and click submit a question. Or if you want a custom video for yourself or maybe a birthday, wish for a friend, a pep talk, and you live in the U.S., go to cameo.com or outside the U.S., you can go to memo.me and order one up ASAP. Well, someone else is ordering something up. Julia Fox ordering a whole bunch of fuck shit. I want to go back in time to when Julia Fox and Kanye first met so long ago, 15 days ago, seven, well, 17 days now, but she gave this interview 15 days ago, 15 fucking days ago, 15 days ago. I have things in my fridge that were there longer. I'm not saying you should eat them, but I'm saying they've been there. And this is the most demented interview I think I've heard a celebrity give in a really long time because it is so, it is just like one jinxy statement after the next. Like, the homegirl, you are, you are really going to be regretting this. Let me help you. Okay, great. So I don't know who the fuck she was talking to, some journalist or whatever. She, their whole relationship, we've talked about this, is the most staged, fake, cringe bullshit. Like Kanye is still clearly not over Kim, right? And Kim might be in a rebound relationship, but I think, confusingly, she actually really is into Pete Davidson for whatever reason. And I think that just galls Kanye. And we've heard, you know, tipsters saying the exact same thing. Cause it's like, yeah, bro. Yeah. You're, you're clearly still pressed about this. You bought a house across the street from your wife. You invited yourself to your daughter's birthday party when no one wanted you there. And so he's with Julia Fox, like exactly the who's who of nobody cares. And she, this, she is thriving right now. Queen mess is thriving. She won't shut up about it. These two won't stop being photographed. And it's so obvious. Like, I don't know if either one of them think they're fooling anyone. They're not fooling us, not here in the Chalantourage. So she was talking about her relationship. And again, they met on New Year's Eve, like of 2021, not like 2015. She said, you know, I'm so used to being fucked over in relationships. We're going to break all this down. So I keep waiting for him to disappoint me because he makes very grandiose promises. And it's like, how could he ever pull it off? All the other things he has going on. Like what? But he always does. Last night was a testament to that. Who even fucking knows what they did last night? I, I don't care. I'm sure it was something demented and bizarre. Also, I love, I love how all Julia Fox needed, the only amount of time she needed for a guy to prove himself as like, oh yeah, trustworthy, was like a fortnight. Not the game. A fortnight means two weeks. Did you know that? It means two weeks. She's like, oh, he always does. Always for what? The last 10 days? You sound insane. Also, her victim narrative. I'm so used to being fucked over in relationships. Well, hi, cowboy. Hi. 
Speaking of demented and bizarre, you're rampaging around my studio right now. I love you so much. Hi, do please don't knock this light over. You're not respecting my boundaries. Please, not the bubble wrap. Get out. He is my own personal Kanye West. He comes in, makes big promises, and then disappoints me, you know? So she already has her victim narrative set. I'm so used to being fucked over. Why is this important? Because her overall narrative is, I need someone to save me. Who's going to be my white knight on a big horse? It's all going to become real clear. Also, if you keep getting fucked over in relationships, gee, who's the common denominator? You. The last we heard of her, like before all this, and not like you even heard or cared, because why would you? Who is she? Was her ranting on Instagram about her deadbeat baby daddy. He's at a strip club. He's at a this. He's at a bar. He's doing whatever. Okay, but you had a baby with him, and whoever he is now, he probably was then, and here you are acting trash, like airing all this dirty laundry, like... This is, this is a trashy look. You know who never does that shit? The Kardashians. Say what you want about them. They keep it locked up. You never hear them do stuff like that. Never. And it's pretty much all Julia Fox does is overshare. Right now, the vibes I'm getting are very much about tolerance, kindness, and love. What are you talking about? I'm canceling cancel culture. I agree with that. And putting an end to this black and white thinking. What are you talking about? How does this have to do with anything? What does this have to do? People shouldn't be defined by their darkest moment. That's true. But you know what, Julia? This is your darkest moment, so you're going to be defined by it. Blah, blah, blah. I don't even know what she's talking about. I'm trying to connect with people. Vibes. It's like, did you just wave out of Coachella? What do you mean? <sighs> okay. The star then revealed that Kanye helped her pack up her old life shortly after they met, with Julia getting rid of many of the old clothes she had from her past. She called it cathartic. Where have we heard this before? He did this to Kim. Remember on the episode when he went into her closet, she was like out of town and threw away all her clothes and filled it with designer shit? First of all, she had designer stuff. She wasn't shopping at TJ Maxx and Kohl's, right? Getting nice drapey tunics from Chico's. She had her style. She had her clothes. But he decided that wasn't good enough, right? And she was really upset. She cried. I mean, look, not everything in my closet. I'm looking at things from TJ Maxx and Kohl's and she goes right now. But they're mine, and no one has the right to come into any aspect of my life, my fridge, my friendships, my clothes, anything, and be like, mm, I'm going to change everything. I don't like it. Who the fuck asked you? Shit like this makes me crazy. And I remember, I remember it too. I remember the day in sociology class in college, our professor was like, you listen to me, ladies. The number one sign of a toxic, controlling, abusive man is he buys your clothes for you. Oh, he just really likes it when I wear this. I think it's so cute. He doesn't like me in those short skirts. He says I look so much better in these like turtlenecks and the long sleeves. So I don't show my slutty ankles. Kanye does exactly this. Is Kanye a violent, abusive man? I don't know. Would I be surprised if I heard that? No. He goes on rants. He's unmedicated bipolar. Sorry, that's not a good thing. He was just in trouble for like battery and shoving someone to the ground. Like, why do we think that there is some sort of boundary for his behavior? Because one thing Kanye has shown us is that his ego, his sense of entitlement is fucking limitless. And what does that lead to? If you can do anything, if you feel like you're entitled to do anything, say anything, buy anything, why do you think that person? would be like, oh no, I'm not entitled to physically do anything. I mean, hopefully he does have that sort of barrier in his mind, but I don't know. Who he is now is exactly who he was when he was first dating Kim. And how many years ago is that? A decade? This bitch still has the same tricks up his sleeve. I'm gonna, I'm gonna throw all your shit out and I'm gonna remake you in the image of what I want. We've done videos on this, the Pygmalion complex. Do you know Pygmalion? It's a Greek myth. And Pygmalion was a sculptor and he couldn't find a, a bitch, couldn't get laid. And so he carved his perfect woman out of marble. And like she came alive and she was like perfect and blah, blah, blah. And you know what's interesting about that fable? That woman who came alive didn't have a name. Nowhere in there did she have a name. 
somewhere in the 1800s, writers and scholars gave her a name. I think it was Galatea or Galita, something like that. But up until then, she had no name. Why is that significant? Because who she was didn't matter. She didn't actually exist. She existed as a reflection of what that man wanted. And this is where we get the muse, right? Let us keep reading. The actress was asked whether or not she was Kanye's muse. And though she didn't say yes outright, she did say, I've always been someone's muse. You can't even see what a possession you are. Honey, that's not a compliment. They don't see you as inspiring. They see you as malleable. They see you as possessable. You know what I get inspired by? My closet. Ooh, I like that sweater. Mm, I'm going to pair it with this and that and that. But the things in my closet have no life or free will of their own. They exist because I allow them to exist. And when they're not useful for me, out they go. And look at how Kanye has treated your life. I don't like this. I don't like this. Out it goes. She's got a baby son. What if he doesn't like that kid? You know, you'd be way better off without that kid. Why don't you send him to the baby daddy? Because you know what she recently did? Apologize to her baby daddy. I'm sorry I was saying this. He's a really good guy. Da, 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 da. Where's your kid for all these, these wild adventures? I mean, I'm not saying the kid isn't with her, but maybe it isn't. Maybe she's like, oh, I'm done with this. This is hard. Wait a minute. Am I saying that? Or did she say almost exactly this? Oh, let us read. The interviewer asked Julia if she was now in yay world. To which she responded, yeah, let's be honest. Why not? Why not? Why not sublimate your entire existence for a man you've known for uh, less time than it takes yogurt to spoil? Why not? I mean, what? It's not like you're a mom and you have like a child you need to be there for, or you're just like a, a woman in the world who should probably guard her heart and her identity and her career. Why not? You know who says why not to things? You're talking about this in the video about fuck it, fuck it. No, girl, it fucks you. Why not? That, there's plenty of why nots, but you don't want to hear them. Why? Because you're desperate. And she says almost this exact same thing. I'm really surrendering. You know what you surrender after? A fight. For someone like me who's such a control freak, bitch, you're not a control freak. You're a, you're a regular freak. Don't you love it when people say that? Like, I'm a control freak. Are you? Are you like OCD, like labeling all your quinoa? No, I don't think you are. I think you're just a mess and you don't really realize it. I mean, you act a mess. The things you post online are a mess. If you're a control freak, you're also a control freak about your image. Kanye probably thinks he's a control freak. No, he's just a megalomaniac. Completely different. For someone like me, such a control freak and always used to taking care of myself, just to let go and be taken care of is foreign at this point in life. I've been the primary caregiver of everyone for so long. Who? Your, I mean, your child? I, yeah, okay. I'm sorry that was a shock to you. So it's a new sensation, but honestly, I think I deserve it. Even a month ago, I was so fucking like, I'm not getting along with my son's father or not having help. It was just me alone. I was so tired and everything was work. And I just remember being like, I don't know that there's going to be a reward for this. So this is like so fucking miserable that I know something good will come out of this if I just hang in there. You're a parent. You're a parent. I'm sorry, I'm going to come down real hard on that statement right now because that kid did not ask to be born. Okay? You made the choice to have a baby. He's your responsibility and we know men are trash and we know men are trash and that they can leave like people are like oh you haven't had kids I'm like no bitch like I don't know if a dude I would have a kid with would be sticking around and I don't want to be a parent enough to be a single one and props to the women who do that's the hardest job in the world it's hard even when there are two people and she just doesn't seem to like get that like this parent thing is like for life it's for life also girl it's this woe is me victim narrative. Do you know how lucky you are? You're luckier than 99.9% .9 of single parents out there, than non-single parents, than just people. You're rich, you're famous, you claim you have two stylists, okay, but you're like taking care of everyone when you're not taking care of picking your own outfits. So what do you do? What would you say you do all day? 
I, I have no real sympathy for this chick. I mean, I mean, I do because I get, I get what she's saying. Like, I'm so tired and this is, I'm doing this on my own. I get that with parenting, but like, you're going to give up like a year into this. Like, I just want someone to come and save me. What's the reward for this? I don't know, dude. It's parenting. What is the reward? I don't know, but I feel like people who have kids should kind of know the answer to that. I, I don't know. And then a few days later, there I am with yay. Although she doesn't call him Kanye, it's yay. And it was the most instant, natural, organic attraction and connection. I just feel really safe with him. It's a redemption story. It is a train wreck, baby girl. Redemption story? This makes, this like makes my stomach hurt. Like I am worried for her. I feel like if you interviewed battered women before the battering started, you would hear this. Like if this should be hung up in battered women's shelters, like as prevention, like this should be, this interview should be like circulated around high school and college campuses. Like, are you saying these things? Do you know someone who is? This is bad. This is bad. Why? Because what it says is I can't take care of myself and I need someone to save me. We talk a lot about emotional getaway cars, right? When you think about a getaway car, you think about like someone robbed a bank and they're running out and they're getting in the getaway car. Is that person running out of that bank with the cops chasing them? Are they like, ah, wait, is this a, is this a Nissan Murano? Mm. Is that like a Land Cruiser or like a Range Rover Velar? I, I'll just, I'll, no, I'll wait. You guys go ahead. I'll wait. BMW 3 Series. got to be coming soon. They're not fucking particular. It runs, it works, it's going, bye. I don't even care what direction it's going in. It's going away from here. Are you conducting your life like that? Because Julia Fox is. Julia Fox is. She is a drowning man clinging and grabbing to anything that floats by. And you know what floats by you in an open ocean? Sharks and trash. Which is it going to be? I don't know. Julia is going to discover which one Kanye is. So she started out with a victim narrative. I just take care of everybody and I've been so fucked over. A victim narrative segues right, right into the perfect composite for a toxic man. Because he knows she's waiting for that getaway car. Vroom, vroom, bitch, let's go. Toot, toot. Do you think Kanye West can't smell this shit a mile away? When did he get with Kim? When she was unhappily married to Chris Humphreys. She was cheating on him the whole time. Yeah, it's, it's true. I remember seeing emails from her to her friend. Anyway, it doesn't matter. She was at a low. Kanye's not dumb. He's crazy, but he's not as dumb as he sounds. He knows the rules of like stocks. Buy low, sell high, right? You take a woman when she's low, you break her down, you build her up into the image you want. Like Pygmalion, like the United States Marine Corps, like training a dog. This is, this is control 101. Break people down unify them either as a battalion or a sorority or whatever, or your partner and raise them, remold them in the image that is beneficial to you. Now we need to do this with the military, right? You can kind of need to do it with the sorority. Can't have too many different personalities in there, right? A lot of estrogen circling around. But you actually don't need this with a boyfriend. Unless of course you do need it. Unless, of course, you are not whole on your own. Unless you think life either should deliver you or owes you some kind of savior. No one fucking owes you a savior. No one owes you a redemption arc. Where did you get that from? No one is coming to save you, baby girl. I've talked about this before. I realized that after I was raped in college. No one was coming to save me. None of my friends that I told, no one in my family that I told. And these people who were the closest to me, who loved me the most, honestly, I know how this is going to sound. They really didn't give a shit. Oh, I'm sorry that happened. Not my therapist, nobody. So you think I went to the police? <laughs> okay, if the people who love me don't care, the people who don't, I mean, I'm not going to put myself out there. And it was, it was truly one of the darkest times of my life because worse than the assault, because that was finite. You know, it was over and I could pack it away someplace dark and distant. 
but it was seeing, <clears throat> I'm not crying about that. I'm crying. I'm, it was seeing the writing on the wall that like, oh my God, like this life is my responsibility. My trauma is my responsibility. My revenge is my responsibility. My triggers are, no one else cares. Even if they love you, it's your life. And through that darkness, on the other side of that really was a redemption story. Because I, it's like I was reborn. I like rose like a phoenix, like a radioactive X-Men. And I realized not a goddamn person in this world is coming to save me. So not a goddamn person in this world is going to control me. No one. No one's going to tell me who I should be, what I should wear, what I should do with my body, where I should live, where I should work. Go fuck yourself. Where were you when I needed you? Nowhere. And where will you be when I need you? Also nowhere. And yeah, we can have people in our life who love us. I'm not saying we roam the earth alone like the Incredible Hulk. And I certainly don't. I have an amazing network of supportive people. But we use this example. Cheerleaders don't play. Go team, right? Deshaun and Odell aren't like, pass the ball to Brittany. Give it to Hannah. Like, they're not. <laughs> they're each in their lane. It's like, they're cheering for you. But hey, man, the outcome of the game, that's your responsibility, not mine. This is how we have to look at our life as a football game. Not as a fairy tale. Not as us running out of a burning bank that we just robbed. Not as us floating through the open sea, drowning and sputtering and letting go of life. So when I realized that, I mean, I became a whole different person. I, I, like I said, I was reborn. And I will never be happy that that happened to me. And if it's happened to you, God knows I'm not. Oh, I just want to go kill people. But maybe that's something we can get out of that. That like, this is our life and it's our responsibility. And the longer we wait and the longer we think, or the more, not even longer, the more we think that if I just had an X, X, Y, Z, I would be saved boyfriend, husband, million dollars, whatever it is, then everything would be fine. Look at Julia Fox. I hope she sees this. Like, girl, you gotta, you need to run from that man. You need to run from that man. So what if we are our own Julia Fox? What if you're foxing around right now, right? How can we insulate ourselves from being just totally consumed by a relationship? Okay, well, let's talk if you're not already in one. And then we're going to talk about if you actually are, because, you know, it's all well and good. And you're like, oh, I'm already there. Well, the best way to insulate yourself from this is to acknowledge fully, painfully, all of that, that whatever you think this guy is going to save you from, he won't. Hi, Snouty. Are you back? Hi. Do you want to come in here? Can you show Hi. Hi. Oh, did you come here to burp in my face? That's, thank you. Come on. Oh, who is this? Who is this? Okay. I know. I know. Hi. I love you. Look how big he is. He's 70 pounds now. That's your own reflection. So the first thing we can do is realize nothing's going to save us. There is no perfect solution. There's no perfect banding. Oh, yeah. Oh, my cozy boy. So anyway, like I was saying, realize the thing you think is going to save you won't. I mean, yeah, if you're really lonely and you want to connect with someone, having a boyfriend is going to help with that. But it's not going to be this magic cure-all. And we've talked about this in terms of plastic surgery because we'll localize on that. Like, if only I had bigger tits, like everything that I'm anxious about and all my social anxiety and blah, 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 it would all just be gone and everything would fit great and I'd have a wonderful boyfriend. Like, when you hear it out loud, you're like, eh. so this is the place to start. When you find yourself like, if only I had a mess and a boyfriend, say it out loud. Say it out loud. If I had a boyfriend, I would never be anxious again. <sighs> that's that's kind of unrealistic. Is that stupid? Walk in the light of the truth. Walk in the light of what you're saying to yourself. Because what you're saying to yourself isn't a dream or a wish in your heart. It is fear. It's a fear-based brain message, okay? And just like any fear, if I look under the bed, there's going to be a six-headed monster under there. Say that shit out loud to yourself. I'm like, <laughs> no, probably not. If you can do that with a, with a monster under the bed, goodbye, I love you. 
Why can't you do it with other things, other fear-based things your mind is telling you? The next thing you're going to do, be as much of a fully formed person as you can, right? There's a reason we get caught in these toxic controlling relationships when we're young. It's because we're not fully formed. Like predators, they don't go for 60 year olds. They go for 16 year olds. They're malleable. They're shape shifting constantly. They want to be included. Our social inclusion needs peak at adolescence, you know, and that's when kids get into a lot of trouble. That's why teenagers are the most violent group in society because they're so socially easily peer pressured because they want to fit in. Let's go rob a gas station. A 65 year old be like, Dennis, no, they're just not going to do it. Right? So if you can become more of a fully formed person, you're going to be toxicity proof. You're going to be surrender proof. Now, hold on. Hold on. I want to surrender too, man. I do. I do. I, I was on a date the other day and uh, we'll see. We'll see. But he's like, you know, I don't want a girl who's like competing with me. Like, trying to like out CEO me. And I'm like, I, I don't want to do that either. I have done that in relationships. I had, you know, competitive adversary relationships and dynamics with a guy and it's deeply unsexy. And I'm like, you know what, when I'm dating someone, I want to be the girl. Like I, Hey, I'm still a business owner and a this and a that, but I don't want to be like eh, leading with my resume and like spiky all the time with my partner. I want to, I want to be the girl. I want a man who's going to like wrap me up and like rub my feet. And I get that. And we all get that. We are all so tired. We are all so tired and men don't get it. They don't get this kind of tired. They don't get the high ponytail the heavy hoops, the lip gloss. And when your hair gets into your lip gloss, hi, are you back with the ball? I, you know what I'm doing here. I'm working. Come on up. We're so tired of taking care of everyone and ourselves and being a million things. Where did you even get this ball? Okay. We're tired because we do a lot, right? I know. Okay. Look at this snout. Look at this snout. Uh-huh. Yeah. Oh, uh -huh. yes. Piglet. Piggy face. Mm -hmm. He's very oral. Very orally fixated. He wasn't breastfed long enough. But don't get testy when I say that. You know it's true. I lost your ball. I'm sorry. Okay. I'm so, I'm so sorry. This is... So how can we be less tired? Take some time for ourselves, right? When we're physically tired, we acknowledge that the answer is not more activity, it's rest. We acknowledge that with like a toddler, like, oh, they're overtired, like the dog's tired, like someone needs a nap, it's time for nap time. And yet we, we fail to acknowledge that for ourselves. You know what I've been doing lately? Reading books. Remember books? I do, like actual physical ones. And it's nice, like I turn my phone into airplane mode, I sit outside with a blanket, I look at the leaves fall off the tree and watch Snouty running around and I'm like, I feel rejuvenated if I do it for five minutes. Can you believe we're at the point in society where I have to be like, hey, read a book, book. But here we are. And it's so simple. And it's like that line from the No Doubt song, like the simple things are simply too complicated for my life. But that is the way out. Restfulness, time for ourselves, time alone, time doing those perfect nine-year-old day activities, right? We talk about that. What would you do when you were nine years old if you could do anything? all day long. What would it be? What dorky fun thing would it be? I've talked about mine. It's stickers, stickers. And one of you guys commented and we went back and forth. It was like, you know, you had them in the binders and there were like some, like the puffy ones. And there were some that were okay to trade with your friends, but there were some where it's like, no, these are mine. And then the scratch and sniff ones that not everyone was allowed to sniff because you'd wear the sniff out. Wow. Wow. But if you can indulge in a little of that, you get back to that internal spark and you kind of re-anchor yourself. And it seems silly that the way you avoid collapsing and solipsizing into a relationship is stickers, but it is. And isn't that kind of dope? I mean, not kind of fucking dope. I'm not being like, well, oh, you need to check into a psychiatric institution, you need three months of intensive therapy. No, bitch, go to Michael's, buy some elephant stickers, live your life. Live your life. 
Another thing you need to do, have set boundaries, not when you're in a relationship, but before. Then we're going to get to it like if you already are. The more boundaries you can set up front, the more effective they're going to be. Think about a fence around a house, a moat around a castle, right? A drawbridge. Is the time to start digging that moat when you see the army cresting over the hill? Perhaps not. Perhaps is more effective in advance, right? Perhaps it is more of a deterrent if people already know it's there. And we're afraid to set boundaries. We're afraid to be like, no, I don't drink. No, I go to bed at 11. No, I get up early to go running. I'm not going to sleep in and do all this shit. Now he's on to the bubble wrap. Cowboy. Hey, cowboy. What is this? Okay. I have never, have you seen this? Well, at least face the camera. I don't touch you nothing. When you can decide on your boundaries up front, they're so much more effective. We just talked on my Instagram. I posted something that love is not about chemistry. It's about truths aligning. And we all have our own individual truths from I need my alone time to don't tell me what to wear to gotta love country music. That was mine. And when we know this up front, we come up with a douchebag categorization system, like an automatic weeding out of people. One of my um, deal breakers now, like my truths, is I don't want to date someone blue collar. I know. Look, it doesn't have to be politically correct, but I want to date someone who is going to match my intensity in terms of my career. And I mean, not all, but like in Montana, a lot of like blue collar dudes are just kind of shit kicking happy. Hey, they run an excavation crew. They do roofing. They're good working for someone else. Like, that's great. That's great. And there's a perfect match for you, but it's probably not me. And I need to know that so that if I see that on Tinder, you know what? You're cute. I'm sure you're a great person. We're not, in a, we're not aligned. These truths aren't aligning. But if I don't know that about myself, if I'm not willing to really look at the data from who I've dated and what I've gone through in my life and be like, it doesn't work if I date an electrician. Like it, with my lifestyle, it just doesn't work. You know, like, no. If I'm not willing to admit that to myself, and maybe the reason is because, Shallon, you're a douchebag and you're clout-driven and that's who you are. Okay, well, we're walking in the light of the truth. We're saving everyone some time. If I'm not willing to look at that, then I'm never going to change it because you can't change what you don't acknowledge. And on the flip side, if you are thinking that a guy is going to save you, you're probably only looking to date really rich guys. And what kind of car is it? Are you getting the outcomes you want? Is that leading to a fulfilling, satisfying relationship? Or are you dating kind of sugar daddies, guys who are controlling you because they've got the money and that's how the world works. The person with money, the person with money makes the rules. Sorry about it. Get the memo. So if you don't acknowledge these things, how can you make a boundary? If you don't know where your property line ends, how can you dig your moat? If you don't know that there is an enemy close by, why would you install a drawbridge? You got to know these things, baby girl. So what if you're in the middle of a toxic, controlling, surrendery relationship? And look, 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 look. A relationship doesn't... Uh, on one hand, I want to say, like, it's not always toxic to be like, I surrender to this relationship. It isn't. Because I'm not saying every guy who you surrender to is like toxic or controlling. I know a lot of people like Mormon housewives, right? Surrender to their lifestyle and to their marriage. And it's not that whoever they're married to is bad or evil or, or anything like that, but it's the inherent dynamic of let me give everything I am to this other person. That's a bad idea. You know, one of the big rules of finance and wealth building is diversify the portfolio. Don't put all your money in Snapchat stocks or WeWork and that's going to go bust. Like, don't bet all on this horse. Like, you got to kind of spread it around because if something goes bust, ugh. I talk about that in terms of my business octopus. I'm not just a YouTuber. Podcast, and it's coming back. Trips, jewelry, clothing, blah, 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 all these things because God forbid one goes belly up. We've got all these other avenues. We got to do that with relationships. Not that you need to have 10 husbands. But you need to have 10 other things that give you emotional satisfaction that feed you 
and not just a guy. Because if that goes bust and he walks out the door, guess what? He takes your entire self with him. You have offloaded all of who you are into this other person because you needed to be saved. And when someone is saving us, hey man, I'm all yours. I'm going to jump into that getaway car. I'm going to cling to this life raft. I'm going to do whatever I have to do to survive. I'm going to make no demands. Just get me the fuck out of here. You're in the driver's seat now. And then you're a passenger in your own life. And it's a very dangerous place to be. So how do you get out of that? What do you do if you're realizing you're in that passenger seat? Okay, well, let's look at the tips if, that I just gave. Why have you let yourself get here? And this isn't about shaming yourself or beating yourself up. But again, you can't change what you don't acknowledge. So how did you get here? What were you running from? Who were you when you made that Julia Fox decision to be like, I give up? Was the answer, you know what? I need two weeks at a spa. I need to hire a nanny. I need to go back to school and get my GED so I'm not making acai bowls for a living. I just got really into acai bowls. I think they're actually pretty unhealthy for you, but just let me have this for a minute. Who were you then? And ask yourself, okay, am I still that person? Am I still that person? Am I still kind of incapable of taking care of this kid on my own? Do I still not really know what I want to do with my career? Am I still fractured and distant from my family? If the answer to these questions are yes, that's where you start. That's where you start. Get that house in order and by proxy, you will feel more empowered to leave this relationship or at the very least, if you don't want to leave and you don't always have to, to regain some independence and get things back in alignment because maybe things started good and balanced and you lost your job or whatever and all your friends moved away and now you're like, you're all I have. Here's how you get back to that neutral, not neutral, but balanced, healthy place. Then let's look at boundaries. What boundaries do you need to set? I don't know. Okay, when do you feel especially sort of put upon, like burdened? When do you feel anxious? I look back on a relationship I was in and I could not have a night to myself. I am an only child, okay? My alone time is extremely important and there's nothing that makes me crazier than people who think alone time is them being with me. I'm not alone. You're here. I'm looking right at you. Alone means alone. And alone does not mean lonely. And I was dating a guy who could not handle it. One night I was like, I need to just be alone, watch my Downton Abbey, fold my laundry. And he's like, okay, well, how would I just come over? I was like, no, how about you go live your own life for 12 hours? And he's like, okay, you're right. Yeah, no, I know. Three hours and he called me crying, crying. Do you want to break up? Why are you doing this to me? It was a nightmare. It was a nightmare. I was his emotional getaway car. And let me tell you, it's not fun on the fucking flip side. And you know what? I did feel like I was in the driver's seat and I could be an asshole because what are you going to do? Leave? You can't leave me alone for three hours. You think you're going to walk out the door? Good luck. It's a real slippery slope to being the bad guy. We don't want to do that. And we don't want to be on the opposite end either, obviously. So think about the times when you're like, oh, I just need a X, Y, Z. Time to myself, a thought of my own, friends, a hobby. When do you feel that way? What is he doing? Does he... Just show up at your book club, even though you told him to stay away from the house for two more hours. And here he is. Set a boundary. Be like, babe, if I say I'm having the girls over for book club till 10, I mean until 10. I will get you tickets to the movie. I'll get you a hand job from the stripper down the street. But stay out of the fucking house. You can sit in the driveway in the car if you want to. But this is my time. Why is this important? Because you need to see his reaction. My ex-boyfriend, his reaction to me needing one night to myself, that was the beginning of the end. That was the beginning of the end. To me, his reaction was not so different than if he had like smacked me across the face. It was like, it it was a method of control. Crying, guilting, having a freak out. I'm like, 
this is, this is a nightmare. This is intolerable. And I needed to see that. I needed to see the extremity. Or you need to see that there isn't the extremity. If your husband or your boyfriend is like, babe, I got it. Yeah, go do your thing. I'm sorry. I didn't mean to intrude. I'm like, oh, okay. Thanks, Mike. Thank you. Maybe that means you've been a little clingy. He maybe doesn't love that you've surrendered completely in him, with a he- which a healthy man would not. Maybe he's actually been giving you hints like, hey, yeah, go make some friends. I was only coming home early because I didn't know if you were going to like be panicking about so many people around suddenly. But you need to know that. You need to know what that data is, whether he actually doesn't want you to have a life of your own or boundaries or this or that, or if he does. Or three, get a goal. I want you to have one intellectual goal and one physical goal, okay? Intellectual goal, get that GED, start your Etsy store, learn German, whatever it might be, something that's engaging your mind. I want you to have a physical goal. I'm running a 5K. I'm doing Pilates five days a week. I'm learning to do the splits. Every year it's on my New Year's resolutions. I write it down and I look at it and I say, you old friend, we meet again. Okay. Because look, the intellect, the physical, these are going to come together to give you more of a fully formed sense of self. We can't be all physical. We can't be all intellectual. We got to be both. We have to remind ourselves how diverse we are, how capable we are. And we gain confidence as human beings through our trials and tribulations, through conquering and overcoming the things that are scary. When I think back on my proudest moments in life, it's not when I was holding up the book that I wrote. It's not when my show premiered. It's when something bad happened along that journey, but I moved past it. I got over it. I maybe didn't love it, but I talked myself out of a spiral. I found another way to that end point. That's when I was like, yeah, I proved something to myself. And the easiest way to do that and therefore to build confidence is to try new shit. Try new shit. Even if you're bad at it, you probably learn something. You learn you didn't actually burst into flames. Life didn't end. Your friends didn't abandon you. Huh. And third, we're going to add a third, a bonus thing I want you to do. I want you to do something that gives back to others. Because right now, you probably think, who am I without this relationship? I don't know. Go out and fucking find out, girl. Who are you when you're volunteering at a homeless shelter? Feeding people at a food bank? Reading to kids in a cancer ward? Are you valuable now? Yeah. Is anybody caring or asking if you have a boyfriend or even what your salary is? No, you are proving your worth and your place in this world 100% on your own. So we're going to stimulate our brain. We're going to stimulate our body. Uh, Get a vibrator too. And we're going to stimulate our heart, our soul, our connection to God, the universe, all of this, whatever you want to call it. We're going to remind ourselves we're on this earth for a reason. We were put here. We have gifts in our heart that we need to share with the world. We have talent, we have usefulness. Even if that usefulness is starts out is unpacking boxes at the food bank. Hey, it needed to be done. Someone had to do it and that person was you. And you got a hungry person one step closer to getting fed. Fuck yeah, you did. And none of this value on earth, none of the reason you were put here has a goddamn thing to do with a man. Nothing. I mean, that's great. If you find a man, we all do. I want you guys to have true love. I'm not saying that you want to be alone forever, be single. No, but that's not your purpose. That's not why you're here. Unless you decide that it is. Okay. Some people do. I personally think there's maybe more in there. I'm all about people maximizing their potential, exceeding it, mining the depths of who they are. So the dream after dream after dream is knocked down, done, tried, conquered, and new, bigger ones replace it, constantly building. That's what I want to see from you guys. That's how you dig out of this surrender mentality. That's how you look around, you say, who's coming to save me? And you laugh, you're like, I don't need to be saved. I save myself. I've got all the tools I need. Would I like some help? Yeah. I'll accept it, but I only need help a little bit in this category. Killing spiders, opening the pickle jar, having sex. Great. I don't need someone to give me purpose in my life. I've done that. You did not come this far to only come this far. 
And when you give into a surrender mentality like Julia Fox does, that's exactly what you're saying. Well, everything I've done and been just either didn't go anywhere, was completely pointless and added up to nothing, or it only added up to a guy finding me. You know, all those times I read those books or like I put on those plays or I, I ran that race in high school. What was the point of that? Oh, to meet Kanye West and to have him save me. Now everything's done. All of my accomplishments, they were only meant to get me a man. For a long time, I did think that. I think we as girls are taught that. Like, be cool, be funny and interesting so a guy will like you. But not too funny or too interesting or, you know, successful and don't wear those clothes. Again, when I realized that the only person I needed to please was me, ironically, I did become more interesting to guys, more magnetic, because I was the girl in love with her own life. I was a girl who knew what she was and who she was, and that made me a leader. And everyone's driven to follow a leader, right? Everyone's magnetized by the girl who's good on her own. And then ironically, you find someone who is a really good fit. 